There are many people who are excited about the emergence of Airbnb. They think they optimize the allocation of real estate resources and makes life easier for travelers. But Airbnb has been a turmoil of lawsuits since last year. Short-term rentals on Airbnb was first banned in UK in last year, September, then in Canada in December. In the United States, where state regulations are different, Airbnb has been involved with a list of seemingly endless lawsuits. So what is wrong with its short-term rentals and where is Airbnb going in the near future? In the UK's case, an Airbnb host was sued by the real estate company for breaching the contract between them, accusing their contracts as the houses for private residents only, and the company sued her for renting rooms in the house to guests for just days or weeks. The company's argument is that such rentals constitute private residents for neither the host nor the guests, and their neighbor's life was disturbed. The court agreed with the company and decided that short-term rentals should not be allowed in such cases, since such for private residence only clause is very common in real estate contracts. This case has virtually set a precedent for banning all short-term rentals on Airbnb in UK, and hosts who break this law can be punished with a large amount of fine and even lose the ownership of their houses. Following the case in UK, in last year's December, Canada's court also gave a precedent-setting decision to ban such short-term rentals. Their considerations were even more close to the economic and social impacts of Airbnb than the United Kingdom's. In cities like Toronto and Vancouver, where buying a house is almost impossible for young people, long-term rentals are vital to the stability of society. When an Airbnb host decides to put an apartment on the website for short-term rental, there will be one apartment fewer in the market for long-term rentals. Since the price of short-term rental is considerably higher, it is not surprising that many apartments are advertised as short-term rentals. In addition to the negative impact on the real estate market, driven by profits, hosts can choose to ignore the necessary measures for safety and may cause serious harm to their guests or neighborhood. In its home country in the United States, Airbnb is still struggling to reach various agreements with state governments. It settled with the New York City last year to agree on the city's punishing holds for short-term rentals, using the Constitution to defend its freedom of speech and to avoid reducing short-term listings on its website. But in this year's case with San Francisco, Airbnb has essentially agreed to help the government to register its hosts, collecting data of hosts who rent their rooms for less than a month, and sharing data with the government for registrations. In New Orleans and Chicago, Airbnb has reached similar agreements. While these cases are prominent, since Airbnb has spread to many other regions in the world, like Asia, the Pacific Islands, and even in the Middle East, there are still many hosts advertising short-term rentals and making high profits from them. Many travelers are simply unaware of the risks of short-term rentals to themselves. Some hosts even rent several beds to different guests in one room, turning a small house into a hostel. Such rooms lack privacy protection and proper security measures, which are generally available in registered hostels, often resulting in injuries and security threats. As we can see, this sharing economy thing is still far away from its mature stage, and current house sharing websites like Airbnb still have a long way in its involvement. So make sure to check the local government's policies, most importantly how it is enforced in reality, before you embark on an Airbnb trip.